Hey everybody, Jake here from Bearded Gear, and you'll have to forgive me for swatting at all these bugs the entire time that I film, but it is super buggy today. It's in the mid-90s today, and I'm in a nice shady spot, but I'm out on a hike in one of my favorite canyons, and I'm ready to do my full review on the Spider Cocapara. Now, if you've watched my unboxing or my first impressions of the Capara, you'll know that pretty much right from the moment that this knife got into my hand, I dug it. It's a really, really well done Spider Co. I was talking to a friend of mine recently about Spider Co's, and you might have noticed that for me, the Spider Co's that have been in my collection the longest and that I carry the most are generally Golden Colorado US made Spider Co's. However, I tend to buy a lot of Taichung Taiwan Spider Co's, quite a few of them. And I usually really like them. <laughs> like my thoughts on them are, are almost never negative. I usually have great things to say about them, but they're not usually the types of knives that I feel the need to keep for a long time and carry and use regularly. They're usually, they seem a little more specialized to me and a little more fancy pants oftentimes than I want to actually use and carry compared to the other Spider Co's that I get from the US. So knives like the PM2 and Para 3 and the Yojimbo 2 and uh, the Shaman are knives that, even now the Native 5, knives that are really easy for me to put in pocket, carry, and use. It's not that I won't use my nice knives. I use my Arius all the time now, and I love doing that. And that's more expensive than any Spider Co I've ever owned. But the things that I like about Spider Co's, holes being better than studs, compression locks often, um, the ergos, the way they design their knives, I get all of those things that I like out of those core US made models. And so the other ones that I try, part of why I love them is because they have a lot of those features that I really like out of Spider Co. But they like dress them up in a fun way. But then when it comes to really using them, I don't find them advantageous compared to the ones from the US that I already have and use and love. Gosh, these bugs are gonna kill me. Anyway, all of that being said, recently I've sold my Subvert. I sold my Tough. Um, I sold my Paysan not that long ago. Uh, I've had a Drunken and I sold that. Uh, I, I've had a, oh, what's it called? It's like a pair of three. It's not the Chaparral. Oh, that's going to bug me. What is it called? I do not, Sage, Sage 5. I had a Sage 5 for a minute. I sold that because there's an argument for that against the pair of three, but I just preferred the pair of three. And so I, a lot of the time I find that I just, when it comes to really using them, if I'm grabbing a Spider Co., to put in my pocket with the intent to use it that day, it's more common for me to reach for the Golden Colorado ones. I feel like I get more value for the dollar that I put into those. And and then those Taichung ones, a lot of the time, if I buy secondary and sell secondary, I can move them for what I got them for, and I can use that money to try other knives. And I don't feel like I'm going to miss them that much. There are times when it's like, oh, it'd be fun to play with my subvert again right now, sure. But anyways, I don't know how much sense that all makes. That's a long way to get into this review, but I think it's worth saying because the Capara is a knife that I really genuinely think is gonna be one of my forever Spider Co's. I've had this knife just over a week now and I have adored putting this knife in my pocket. Absolutely adored it. The way that this knife carries it's one, it, I mean, it carries better than my PM2, carries better than sh my Shaman. I think it even carries better than my Para 3 because there's less of a hump here, the way it goes in and out of pocket. The only US made Spider Co that I have that carries better than this one is my Native 5, which is fluted carbon fiber, linerless, super light, very small. Uh, this carries so good. And I love wire clips. You've probably heard me say that if you've watched any of my videos featuring a knife with a wire clip on them. I adore wire clips. I really like the way that they function. It works especially well on a knife like this with smooth carbon fiber, where 
going in and out of pocket on this knife, it's just butter every time. But sometimes when things are too smooth going in and out of pocket, it means crappy retention. That hasn't been the case with this. I've had this knife in a variety of pockets. It kind of looks like I'm naked right now, but I'm wearing tan shorts. These are Dickies shorts, goes great in these. Thick jeans, goes great in those. Slacks even, goes great in those. I haven't put a pair of pants on and then put this knife into them and been like, oh, bummer, I found one that doesn't work yet. And I've carried this knife extensively. It's great in pocket. Not only that, but the profile of it, the way that this knife is shaped, the way that they've angled the clip, just the way that this knife sits on my person when it's in my pocket is so comfortable. This, the shaping of it, getting my hand past it, the way that this backspacer fills the whole void in the back here so there's no like gap that my hand's trying to get into, the way they've positioned the lanyard hole doesn't bug me, and I hate lanyard holes. It's just so well thought out. Now, what's funny is that this knife is designed for food prep. That's like, that's what it says on paper is this is a food prep knife. And so I have found a couple of opportunities to, I think I cut some broccoli with it, cut an apple for my daughter with it. I've cut a couple of things in the kitchen with it. And sure, it's great at that. It's an awesome flat grind with a great height of the blade for food prep, a great tip for food prep. It's nice and thin behind the edge. It slices well. It's holding an edge great. It's S30V, I'd expect it to. But as good as it is at food prep, this knife stuns me with how good it is at regular EDC tasks. This knife is not going to be an outdoor hard user folder knife for me. You're going to find that as much as I love that type of activity, I don't look for all of my knives to fit that role. Because as much time as I spend out in places like this, I brought this knife today to film it up here, not to clear trails with it. S30V carbon fiber, this profile, this blade stock, this isn't the knife that I would pick to be up here with to do crazy stuff. But for opening up packages, cutting through cord and thread or fabric, cutting through rope, cutting through food, cutting through anything that a normal person is going to encounter in a typical day that they need to cut, this knife is just great at it. I love the tip. I love the profile of the tip to get into material. I, I mentioned in a, another video, I think it was when I was talking about my PM2 recently, that Barbies, for some reason, ship with like tons of those little like super thin plastic tabs, like what holds a tag on a shirt when you're buying a new one. But they stick them into like the dress on the Barbie and the back of its head and all kinds of stuff. And it's like playing a game of operation, getting a Barbie out of a package for my five-year-old daughter, because you have to like get into those spots and make precise cuts without cutting the hair or the fabric of the clothes or all kinds of, it's, it's really this delicate procedure to get a Barbie out of packaging. I don't know if any of you open Barbies, but my point is a tip like this and a profile like this and the shape like that, like the way that this knife comes together and how many grips it's comfortable in and how intuitive it feels to use. It's one of the best EDC knives that I've ever owned and used. It genuinely is one of the best for EDC. If I had to pick a knife for like regular kind of light medium duty EDC tasks, this knife is better than the PM2 at that. In my opinion and in my experience thus far, genuinely to have in your pocket on a daily basis for the types of normal like package opening level tasks that most people do with their knives, this is better than my PM2. It really is. And if you're looking at an S30V PM2, I would say it's as good at anything as the PM2. You've also got a compression lock. You've also got skeletonized liners. You get carbon fiber, which is better in many ways than G10. You get a wire pocket clip, which comes deep carry, starts out tip down. It can only be tip down right or left hand. So if you're a tip up guy for some reason, sorry, it's only tip up, not tip down. I had that backwards. If you're only a tip down guy for some reason, you're not going to like this. But compared to an S30V basic PM2, this knife blows it out of the water, in my opinion. Genuinely, so much better. You don't have to fuss with a weird lanyard tube. Take down and putting back together is going to be much easier on this to service the knife. They both run on washers. They, 
I don't find that this knife is going to be any less structurally stable than a PM2 in any way. It's just so well thought out for typical EDC use. Now where my PM2 is still going to beat this is my PM2 is in 10V blade steel. And the grippiness and the ruggedness and the ergos on that are a little more hard use than this one is. So if they made a Scorpion <laughs> Capara with Coyote Brown G10 scales and 10V blade steel, then we might have a fight on our hands for that as well. But the blade stock thickness on this, the grind, the ergos, the materials, everything about this knife is one of the best EDC knives I've ever experienced. If you're looking for an EDC knife around the three and a half inch mark, and you want it to be relatively lightweight for its size, you want it to carry well, you want it to be comfortable to have in your pocket, all day long, every day. You want it to be a performance oriented blade shape that's designed to go through material really well. You want it to be comfortable in the hand. Like all of these things that someone would typically look for in an EDC knife, this checks every box super, super well. It genuinely does. I'm, if you can't tell, I'm just thoroughly, thoroughly impressed with the Capara. If you've thought about buying one, and you have the chance to do so. I know they can be spotty as to when you can get them and they tend to kind of come in waves, but if you get the chance to pick one up, especially the CQI version, I'm not gonna say that the pre-CQI version isn't good. I just haven't experienced it. I'd assume that the quality improvement they did improved it. So especially if you can get a CQI, do it. It's so good. It's one of the best spider codes I've not only experienced in a long time, but maybe ever experienced. I think this is an absolute hit from them. And I know that it's got a fair amount of hype and a lot of people have already said a lot of good things about it, but it deserves even more than I've seen because it's just, it's one of their best knives that I've ever experienced. It's so good. The scales, they seem like a really nice set of aftermarket scales to me, or like they'd come on a much more expensive knife. This carbon work, is flawless. No voids. The edges are all rounded. It's contoured around the handle. The way that the hardware sits in it, the way everything is finished, the way it fits so flush, it's some of the best carbon I've ever experienced on a pocket knife. It genuinely is. It's not like fluted. So maybe if you like the, the texturing and the, the extra machine work that goes into some of stuff like that, you might find that that type of carbon is more fancy. But for regular carbon that's just shaped and smooth, it's phenomenal. It's also this nice matte texture. I find I prefer dry carbon to wet carbon, dry being matte and wet being glossy, at least in automotive, those are the terms for it. I, I don't know what in, in the knife realm is the proper way to express that, but the dry carbon, this matte finish, has more texture inherently than the glossy. And this knife with its ergos, does not feel like it needs any more texture than it has. It is so comfortable because of the smoothness of this finish. I'm finding more and more lately, I've, I'm have i growing a preference for smooth handle materials compared to rough handle materials. For a long time, when I was focused on a lot of utility in knives, and in still in certain knives, I look for that. But for a long time, it was really important to me to get like super textured, handle materials and for a long time I thought the more jimping the better and that stuff's just uncomfortable in a lot of situations so to have an EDC knife which is where I put this I know it says food prep but food prep knives turns out make awesome EDC knives um for it being an EDC knife like it's built this finish on this handle material just works so good it's yeah, I don't know. I feel like I'm rambling on this one and I keep probably talking in circles and bringing up the same things over and over again, but I'm genuinely just really, really excited about this knife. It's rare for me. Like lately I've gotten a lot of new knives. I've got loaners that I'm supposed to be carrying to be checking out. I've been buying new knives of my own. I have a lot of stuff that like within the last month I've probably got, I don't know, at least five or 10 new knives that are in my possession that are still new to me and it's been hard to justify carrying anything else as a primary. I just, the level of comfort, the level of ease of use, the 
the performance that I get out of this when I carry it, it's one of my favorite knives to carry, period. It's just so good. And I recently did a video on secondary carry knives. This knife isn't going to fall in that role. This is a primary carry knife for me. This is a knife that is going to go in my front right pocket every single time that I carry it. And it's going to sit in that same spot and I'm going to pull it out and I'm going to know exactly what to expect from it. My knives that go in that pocket are about this size pretty consistently. They're around this weight, give or take, pretty consistently. And they're designed to usually at least do medium to heavy duty EDC tasks. If I'm going outdoors, it's a different type of knife that I put there. But when I'm doing my regular EDC tasks, this fits the mold precisely of everything that I'm looking for. It's excellent, sincerely. Now, the one thing that I would change about this knife, literally only one, is blade steel. S30V is fine though. Do I hate S30V? No, not at all. If it's going to have a steel that's less preferable for me, S30V is a great one. It's if, if I'm looking at like what I would call mid-level steels, this is at the front of the pack for me. But this is not, by today's standards in 2020, a premium steel. It's just not. If they did this knife in Rex 45, 20CV, or M390, any of those variants, if they did it in M4, if they did it in S90V, if they did it in S110V, although I prefer S90V to S110V, if they did this in Maximet, oh goodness, it would be <laughs> so good. Um, in, in many of those steels that Spyderco is capable of working with and that they work with frequently on other platforms, if they did this knife in one of those steels, it would just be borderline perfection for me so good. Now, does S30V ruin it? Absolutely not. I'm going to keep carrying this knife like crazy. I'm going to keep using it like crazy. I'm going to keep enjoying it consistently. And it's really well done, S30V. And again, I don't particularly have anything against S30V. But for this knife to be perfect in my book, it would have a better steel. If you're the kind of person who doesn't fuss about blade steels like I tend to, and S30V, in your opinion, is all the steel you need for the type of types of tasks that you do, then you need this knife. <laughs> it's just so good in every single way. It genuinely is. The ergos are almost unbeatable for a knife of this size and weight and configuration. It feels so good in my hand. There's no jimping anywhere, which I love. Everything is smooth. Everything is comfortable. The grind is fantastic. It's thin behind the edge. It's ground and sharpened super well. There's forward grip. There's a primary grip. It's great in reverse grip. It's comfortable in any orientation that I've put it in my hand. Literally every way that I hold this knife, it feels good. Every way that I've cut this knife with this knife, it performs well. It's just absolutely out of this world excellent in, in all of my scorable arenas. And I, the, the biggest bummer is that I didn't try one sooner. I should have owned this knife for a long time now. And I'm just now hopping on the bandwagon of how great it is. But yeah, this is really, really good. So if you have not yet experienced a Spider Kokopara and you get the opportunity to do so, if this knife is within your budget and your price range and stylistically you like it, I happen to think it looks great, but stylistically, if you think it looks acceptable to you and the price is acceptable to you, then there's no other Spider Co. at the moment that I would necessarily recommend more. It's really like if someone's asking me what's for an EDC Spider Co., a knife that's not expected to go chop through hard wood and do crazy things like I do with some folders that I probably shouldn't do. Like a reasonable hard EDC use knife from Spyderco. This is probably their best offering right now that I've experienced thus far. It's genuinely excellent. So maybe I'm sounding too much like a fanboy. I'm just actually this excited. There's, there's nothing I would change about it except upgrade the steel if I could. And if that happens and they out launch one and another steel and it's an exclusive or a sprint or I don't care what, I will be buying one. Absolutely.
And if I don't like the handle material, I'll keep this one and I'll blade swap them. I don't know. I'll make it work because this handle material is perfect too. But yeah, that's going to be my thoughts on the Capara. It's genuinely just so freaking good. It's an amazing knife and I have thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I know that I'm going to be loaning this one to my brother so that he can check it out because yeah, it's, it's a knife that people need to experience. So I, the only times when this won't be getting consistently pocketed will be when I lend it to friends or family so that they can try one out to convince them that they need to buy one because it's one of the best knives I've experienced in a, a very long time. It's really, really good. All right, enough rambling. <laughs> That's going to be it. Um, thank you to all of you who have watched to this point and dealt with my horrible abilities at talking today. But this has been fun. This is the Spyderco Capara, and it's awesome.